Okay, now I want to show you another crazy thing about soils. So here I have a water bottle that's completely filled up with sand. It's completely filled up with sand. It's a fairly coarse sand and it's, it's completely saturated with water. And I put some red dye so it's easy to see the water. But you can see that the water bottle is filled with sand and it's filled with water and the water comes out this tube at the top and you can see the water's coming out the tube. Now watch this. This is just like crazy. So I'm going to set the bottle down there. I'm going to stick this tube up here so that you can see the water. And now you're going to have to let me zoom in. For okay, here I am zoomed in on my water bottle. Here's the water bottle full of sand and it's completely saturated and the water comes up the top and in this tube. And you see I've dyed it red and you can see the top of the water in the tube is about right here. So now what I'm going to do is squeeze the water bottle and we're going to see what happens to the water in the tube. Now you already know what's going to happen to the water in the tube, right? As soon as I squeeze the water bottle, it's going to go flying up the tube. Are you ready? Here we go. I'm going to squeeze it and holy smokes, what happened? Let's look at that again. Here's the water in the tube and I squeeze it and it goes down. That's amazing. What is going on here? Let's try it again. I'm going to, here's the water in the tube. I'm going to squeeze the water bottle and the water goes, ooh, it went up this time. Well, what's going on? Sometimes when I squeeze the water bottle, it goes down. And other times when I squeeze the water bottle, the water goes up. Well, that's crazy. Now, if you've been paying attention, when I squeeze the water bottle near the top, the water goes up. And when I squeeze the water bottle near the bottom, the water goes down. Well, this is a demonstration of dilatancy and contraction of soils during shear. And now I'll explain to you what's going on. In order to explain dilation or contraction during shear, I've got this really simple model of soil. It's made up of beer pong balls. Now, some of you might think these are ping pong balls, but I can assure you the beer pong balls, because beer pong balls cost about one-tenth of ping pong balls. I'm pretty sure beer pong balls are just reject ping pong balls, but they're way cheaper, so I use beer pong balls. Anyway, this is a very, very simple model of soil. It's a uniform soil, an extremely well-rounded soil, and all the particles are the same size. And this particular soil modeled by these beer pong balls can be in one of two states in terms of, of density. It can be in a very loose state like this, where it's at its, as loose as it can possibly be, or it can be in a dense state like this, where it's as dense as it can get. And its behavior in shear is going to be very different when it's dense than when it's loose. So here's an example of the soil when it's as dense as it can be. And if I put a shear stress on this and there's shear strain, I can do that just by pushing on the sides, notice that the volume of the soil increased. Let me do that again. Here it is in a, in a dense state, and when I shear it, the volume increases. Similarly, here it is in its loose state, and if I shear it in its loose state, the volume is going to decrease. Again. Here it is in its, in its loose state, and if I shear it in a loose state, the volume is going to decrease. So the change in volume is going to be, during shear, is going to depend on, on whether it's loose or whether it's dense. Now if it's saturated and it's in a dense state, imagine now this is completely filled with water. In order for it to expand like this, if it's saturated, it's going to have to draw water down into it. And if it's in this loose state and it undergoes shear and it starts to get denser, to go down, it's going to have to push water out of it in order for it to reduce in volume. So that's the key to understanding this. And let's draw a picture of what's going on in our water bottle. So here's my water bottle. It's got a little tube coming out the top. And it's all full of soil. It's completely full of soil and completely full of water. Now, when I squeeze this water bottle by putting a force on the sides, 
P, I'm actually going to push the water bottle in like that. That's going to create shear zones here in the middle of the, of the bottle. It's actually going to undergo shear there in the middle of the bottle, just like this shears. And it's under going to go both a, a shear stress and a shear strain. So there'll be shear stress tau in here, and that'll generate a shear strain gamma. Now, when I push at the bottom of the bottle, I've actually packed this sand in here really densely, or as dense as I could. And when I push on the bottom of the bottle and cause the shear, uh, at, at P bottom, the soil is really, really dense. So it's like this. And when I shear it, it has to increase in volume. And to increase in volume, the water has to flow into it. So when I squeeze at the bottom, the water flows into it. Do you see that again? Here's the water right now. And I squeeze at the bottom, and the water flows into it. Now, near the top, because there's no real stress at the top, it can't be that dense, even if I pack it in dense. So when I push at the top, the shear stress that's created in here, it's in a loose state, and when it shears, it wants to get denser, and to get denser and decrease volume, it's got to push water out. So when I squeeze at the top, the water comes out and it goes up. So, one more time. Dense soils in shear dilate. They increase in volume, and in order to do that, they need to draw water into them if they're saturated. That's what's happening here. And loose soils, when they are sheared, want to contract, and they're going to want to push water out of them if they're saturated, and water's going to be forced out just like that. Now, is that amazing or what? Aren't soils cool? Well, now let's look at our direct shear test and see how this behavior of dilation or contraction during shear affects the behavior in a direct shear test. So here I have my model of my direct shear box. You should have already looked at the direct shear videos. And, and remember, I, I have a box that's split in half. The bottom half is going to be fixed here, and the top half of the box can slide left or right. And I've shown it here displaced over a little bit because I can't move it on the whiteboard. But remember, at the top of the box, we're going to provide some normal force. And if we divide by the area of the specimen here, that'll apply some normal stress here at the top of the box. And then, at the side of the box, I'll be pushing on the box here with a shear force S. And that's going to cause the soil to shear across this line right here. And it's going to generate a shear stress across here that's going to be tau. So I have a shear stress applied, a normal stress applied on this plane, and a shear stress across the plane. Now, when I, as I'm pushing on the box, the top of the box, to shear it, I can also make other measurements on this box. And I'm going to measure the displacement delta H, the horizontal displacement in this direction. And I'll just do that by attaching some sort of a dial gauge onto the box right here. And as the box displaces, I'll read the dial gauge. And similarly on top, I could put some sort of a dial gauge here on the top of it. And then I could measure the vertical displacement down this direction. And that would be delta V. So the vertical displacement. So I'm going to measure the horizontal displacement and the vertical displacement as I'm shearing the soil here. So let's do a plot and see what happens to our different soils in this one. So I am going to plot two different values here. Both of these I'm going to plot as a, as a function of the horizontal displacement, delta H. That'll be delta H. And that's a sloppy delta H. That'll be delta H. And the first one, what I want to plot is tau, the shear stress at the center of the specimen, as a function of the displacement. And we'll start with our loose soil. Remember, our loose soil was green up here before. So for our loose soil, as I start to push on the box with the shear force and generate this shear stress tau, the top of the box is going to slide to the right, as I showed there. And it's, uh, the, as a the force increases, the displacement will increase, and it'll eventually come up here to some maximum value, and I'll have some 
tau max there. And that'll be the shear strength of the soil under this particular normal stress. Well, what's going to happen to the displacement of the top cap? In this one, in this second plot, I want to plot the vertical displacement, the upward or downward movement of the soil. Well, remember, the soil started off loose. Remember what happens to a loose soil when I shear it? When a loose soil shears, it wants to decrease in volume. Well, the area can't change because it's contained within this ring. So in order for it to decrease in volume, the, the displacement of the top of it's going to have to go down, just like the displacement of this goes down when it's sheared and it's loose. So what's going to happen with the loose soil, so green is loose, the loose soil, as I shear it and there's horizontal displacement, it's going to decrease in volume. There's going to be a vertical displacement that's negative, that's downward, until it becomes asymptotic out here. All right, well, let's look at what happens with the dense soil. Now, with the dense soil, remember, here's my dense soil, and as I shear it, remember, it wants to increase in volume. And not only does it want to increase in volume, but you can imagine that this dense soil is going to be much stronger in shear than is the loose soil. So what's going to happen to the dense soil? Dense is red. So for the dense soil, it's going to, uh, first of all, it's going to be stiffer than the loose soil, which makes sense. It should be stiffer. And so as I start pushing on it here with this shear force and generate that shear stress, it's going to increase in strength. And that strength is going to be higher than the maximum strength we got from the loose soil. And it's going to come up to some peak value, but then it's going to decrease. And it's going to decrease, because you can probably imagine this, as this soil shears, and I'm, you remember, it's got a normal force on it, I'm pushing it, you know, I've got to push it up over, over the hill, and when I get to the top of the hill, it's going to be at its maximum strength, and then when it comes back to the other side of the hill, it's actually going to be easier to push over the hill, and so its shear strength is actually going to decrease after it reaches that peak and come down, and if it's the same basic soil as this one, it's eventually going to come down and, and match this soil. But it's going to have a peak shear strength, tau peak, it's a lousy P, tau peak, and then it's also going to have a residual shear strength, tau R, which is going to be the same as the maximum shear strength of the loose soil. Now what's going to happen in terms of displacement? Remember, for my dense soil, it wants to dilate during shear or it wants to increase in volume. And it, in order to increase in volume in the, in the direct shear box, again, because the area can't change, it's, the top cap is going to have to move up. So it's going to want to move up. So how's that going to look? There's almost always going to be a little bit of downward movement of the top cap at the beginning of the test. But very quickly, that's going to turn up, and it's going to have an increase in volume. The vertical displacement is going to be higher, and it's going to come up and it's going to reach a residual value and come out here at an asymptote. So this is dense. This is loose. So the dense soil has a peak shear strength that's higher than the shear strength for the loose soil. And that shear strength is going to occur here at a smaller displacement. Uh, in a, if we could measure strain, it would be at a smaller strain. And the dense soil is going to have a residual strength that's lower than its peak strength. The loose soil is going to come up, it's going to come up monotonically to its maximum shear strength, and it's going to have a single max maximum shear strength. And that's going to occur at a much larger displacement here, or a much larger strain than it did for this dense soil. The dense soil the, the volume is going to increase, and for the loose soil, the volume is going to decrease. So that's, again, dilation and contraction during shear. I hope this helps explain it to you. And aren't soils cool? <laughs>